The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is jam-packed with glitches and bugs that can actually be quite useful to the player. The duplication glitch is useful for stockpiling consumables as well as valuables to sell to merchants. The Daedric Armor glitch is more for aesthetics, but the bound weapons and certain armor pieces can be useful early game. The Enchantment glitch, which we have yet to cover, allows the player to permanently keep the effects of their enchanted armor. Well, this next glitch that we're going to discuss today is a little different from the previously mentioned ones. The others are a source of minor aid, inventory boost, or economical advancement, while this one arguably changes the game a whole lot more. This is the glitch that allows the player to completely finish the main questline within 20 minutes of starting the game. Before doing this glitch, I highly recommend that you go through the main questline on a separate playthrough as the story, characters, and loot you come across will completely change your experience with the game. This glitch is best used for those who are playing an alternate character or have already seen how the storyline unfolds. Also worth mentioning is that there aren't even really any advantages to doing this glitch. Perhaps to avoid certain NPC interactions, less oblivion gates, and receiving decent armor, but other than that, there's no real gain that you otherwise couldn't receive by going through the entire quest line. This glitch can be performed at any point in the main quest, or throughout your time just playing the game, so long as you don't get past the point in which the glitch brings you to. For this video, we'll perform it from the angle of starting a brand new playthrough. This occurs while the Emperor and the Blades are escaping through your jail cell, and you get to follow them out of exile. After going through what is essentially the entire tutorial, which includes building your character's skills, features, and abilities, to dungeon crawling and sewer navigation, to watching the Emperor die and being entrusted with the Amulet of Kings, you'll finally pop up to the surface. If you're really trying for time, you could be 10 to 12 minutes into your playthrough at this point in the game. The next step is fairly crucial as this one item is needed to move at a very quick pace. Skuma is a popular drug in the Elder Scrolls universe, and one of its side effects is it increases your movement speed. As an example of where to find some, I fast traveled to the city of Leowin where there is an Argonian named Darji, who happens to be a fence for the Thieves' Guild, but more importantly, when you lockpick his house and break in, tucked away in the corner, there's a locked chest that contains three bottles of Skuma. On console, two bottles is enough to perform the glitch, but on PC, three bottles couldn't get it done. In the end, I obtained six bottles to be safe. Just be sure to save the game before doing this glitch in case you need to find more skooma. For instance, there is a skooma den in Breville that will have the rest of the supply that you need. When all of the skooma is obtained, the player will then need to fast travel to the Imperial City Temple District. Upon arriving, you'll be faced with the Temple of the One and its Grand Wooden Door. Remember that it's a good idea to save here in case you need more skooma bottles. The player will then run up to the door and begin consuming all of their skooma. This will fortify your speed, which is exactly what you need. Once drunk, the player will then continuously run into the left side of the wooden door to the Temple of the One. While running into this door, you're now going to want to resave your game, preferably as a new save file. The reason for this is you'll want to be as close to the door as physically possible for the next steps. The player will then immediately exit out of the game and go to the main menu where you can then immediately press continue and load back in. While doing this, you'll have to hold down your forward key or your controller joystick as to continue running in a straight line forward. In a split second, the game loads the player into the world first and then the structures. So, if you consumed enough skooma, were running into the door before the save, and then running into the door while loading, you should have just phased through the door to the Temple of the One. Once inside the phase building, almost in an easter egg-like fashion, with only about a quarter of it sticking out, you'll see the wooden door to the Temple of the One. Upon entering it, you'll notice the atmosphere quickly changes. Yes, you're inside the Temple of the One, however, you hear the ambience of war and fighting, as well as the overall world has shifted to a pink or orange tint. This has directly put the player into the final quest of the main storyline, which includes an all-out war between Mehrunes Dagon's forces and the Imperial City. The next steps are to leave the Temple of the One, and when you do, you'll notice there are Oblivion Gates all over the Temple District. 
Daedric spikes and overgrowth have occurred, there are burnt and charred bodies, Daedra are swarming the streets, and the Imperial Guards are fighting a losing battle. This section can be overwhelming if you choose to stay and fight, so I recommend not doing so. As a note, you cannot leave the Temple District as all of the doorways claim to be wooden doors, but are simply impassable. The player will want to run slightly past the spires and spikes close to the action in order to initiate the quest titled Light the Dragonfires. Once activated, the player will then run back inside the Temple of One and proceed to wait for 24 hours. Upon waiting, when the hours left reach 14, it will skip right down to 1. The menu will close and Martin Septum will be there to initiate dialogue. At this point, he tells you that Mayron's Dagon has burst through and is currently ravaging the city. The Dragonfires are out and there is no way to repel him. Then, Martin gets an idea and tells you to trust him and to lead the way. You can either tell him to follow you or to wait. Either way, he runs off to the side of the room where you can then proceed to go talk to him again. It's here that he tells you he can use the Amulet of Kings to defeat Mayrun's Dagon and thanks you for all of your help. The following in-game cutscene is the classic duel between Martin and Dagon. This is where Martin uses the amulet to turn into a dragon, and after a few hits from both sides, Mayrun's Dagon is banished back to the realm of Oblivion to allegedly never be able to return. Martin sacrificed himself in the process due to the overwhelming power of becoming a hallowed dragon. The dragon's body is then turned to stone, and the in-game cutscene ends. This is then followed by a real cutscene which signifies the end of the main quest, and thus, the glitch has worked and the entire main storyline has been circumvented. Or, so we thought. After talking to the High Chancellor who gives you the highest honors, clears up some of the questions behind what happened, and promises you Imperial Dragon armor, you can then go talk to Joffrey, who, in the wake of everything that just happened, has the beginning quest dialogue for returning the amulet to him. He goes through the conversation of the amulet, Martin Septum, the Blades, and then asks you to go to Kavach. Interestingly, afterwards you can talk to him again about Martin Septum, the Amulet of Kings, and everything that just occurred as he seems to have just registered that the final quest took place. However, when looking at your quests, you'll notice that while yes, Light the Dragonfire's quest is completed, the Find the Air quest is still active. And when traveling to the city of Kavach, not only is the Oblivion Gate still there and active with Daedra pouring out, when you go into the chapel to look for Martin, he is not there. Martin is nowhere to be found, which not only means that the game has registered Martin's sacrifice and that he has been despawned, but also you will always have the quest of finding the heir in your active quests. Funny enough though, every NPC will acknowledge Martin's sacrifice and the defeat of the Daedra. It's just the game can't register skipping ahead in the main questline, and even though it has been completed, it technically hasn't even barely started. Perhaps the best thing to come out of this glitch is the Imperial Dragon Armor you receive from the High Chancellor. The annoying part to this is the player has to wait two in-game weeks for the armor to arrive, which is 336 seconds. This certainly is not the end of the world, it's just a little tedious like mentioned before. Once received at the Imperial Legion compound, the armor's aesthetic is beautiful and it comes with some decent enchantments. The player has a chance at receiving either the light armor or the heavy armor version depending on each skill level. The higher the skill level of either one is the determining factor for which set of armor you'll receive. Since my character has equal skill in both, it automatically defaults to heavy armor. Overall, this glitch is certainly one of the most game-altering bugs the player can do, and there really aren't that many pros to activating this bug. But, it is fairly neat and interesting that it can be performed practically so simply, and takes you to the very last quest in the main storyline. Plus, you get some pretty useful armor out of it.